And we begin with breaking news about the police officer at the center of the Eric Garner case. He has now been suspended from duty. This move follows the recommendation of a New York Police Department administrative judge who called for the firing of officer Daniel Pantaleo for his controversial involvement in Garner's death. Now, Pantaleo is accused of putting Garner in an alleged chokehold in 2014. For more, let's turn to CNN crime and justice reporter Shimon Prokupes. So uh, tell me more about what's unfolding right now, Shimon. Well, the first step in this process of Daniel Pantaleo possibly never wearing a police uniform ever again, him being fired, terminated uh, from the job. We are in the first step of this process. The NYPD police commissioner has been awaiting the recommendations from this NYPD judge, internal proceedings that went on for about six days, uh, and evidence was presented. And the judge today recommending, these recommendations are for the police commissioner, ultimately, that he fire Daniel Pantaleo. Now, it's widely expected that the police commissioner will follow this recommendation. However, there's always a chance that Daniel Pantaleo's attorneys could make a, uh, an argument. Uh, they will have the opportunity to make this argument, to follow up, to appeal to the police commissioner that he should not fire Daniel Pantaleo. We think that decision will come within the next two weeks. Uh, that's still unclear, but there is some time before we get final word from the police commissioner on whether or not Daniel Pantaleo will be fired. That decision solely, solely rests with the police commissioner. It is interesting, I want to point out, that we've been talking to sources who are familiar with the judges, the internal judges' thinking. And one of the things that she found was that this chokehold, uh, that it was improper uh, in what Pantaleo did here to Eric Garner, that it was, that there was misconduct, that it was reckless, and that is the reason why she has determined and recommended that Pantaleo be fired. So the judge made this recommendation, huge development, but it's not the end of the road. We'll have to find out what's next. Shimon Procupes, thank you so much for breaking it all down for us. Elliot Williams uh, joins us. He has worked as a federal prosecutor, deputy assistant attorney general, and former assistant director of immigration and customs enforcement. Okay, so let's just break this down. Explain the process. Why is the judge's verdict non-binding? The judge recommends termination. But for now, he's only suspended. Because ultimately, it is the commissioner of the NYPD who makes the determination of, as to whether to fire somebody or not. Now, the judge weighed the facts of the case, looked at the background, and decided that, that she would recommend termination. But again, that decision rests with the commissioner. This is a case that has drawn so much attention and controversy. It was just talked about uh, a couple of days ago during the debates because, you know, in the wake of the, the, the DOJ's decision to not bring charges, a grand jury uh, declined to indict this officer. That just created more of a, of a strong reaction for those who want to see him be held accountable for the death of Eric Garner. What do you think this ruling will do uh, moving forward? Well, again, the, well, well, the big question is why it took five years. Exactly. Right? And so with all of those steps playing out, it didn't. if they were going to make a decision to terminate him, um, that could have been done a long time ago. They didn't need the federal process to play out. So that's the big question over all of it. What does it mean? Well, the if, if this does stand, the police union will not be happy. They have issued a number of statements saying that we're under duress and so on and, uh, and that you know, uh, you're, you're criminalizing police work. But at the end of the day, what you had was a video with an individual saying 11 times that he couldn't breathe and uh, findings that, um, that, is, that the police officer's conduct was, quote unquote, reckless. Mm -hmm. And so what it will mean is uh, accountability. I mean, but, but like, you're right. Five years later, this has happened. It's, so the just Why five years? Yeah. I mean. Well, to be, uh, cynically speaking, the Justice Department took five years to make the decision and made the decision not to move forward. But that's on not the eve of the, typical, right? On the, yeah, I mean, it, it could have, the decision could have been made quicker. This was the Justice yeah. Department that I served at, too, so I don't want to pin this all on Trump's Because book. I remember just, just looking back, I mean, you know, you look at, like, Ferguson, for example. Yeah. The Justice Department acted clearly more swiftly than in this case, yeah. right? I mean, w with the officer there. I mean, why? Again, we, I think we take, we should take, we, my Justice Department that I served under Obama, should, should take some responsibility for the fact yeah. that this took as long as it did. And it was on the eve of the statute of limitations expiring that right. the Attorney General decided not to move. Now, the state and the city held off any of their decisions while the federal cases were pending. But the problem is that meant that five years would pass before you'd have any accountability. And so everybody failed here, and this should not have taken as long as it right. did.
personally read Judge Maldonado's recommendation, and do you agree that you know, he should be fired? Again, what I'm talking about today is a fair and impartial process has occurred. That's all I have to say. No, I have not. Look, uh, I haven't heard what he said today. I know members of Congress want to look at this issue. I certainly think it's fair to say here was a tragedy. It cannot happen again. And what I would ask the members of Congress to look at is the role of the Justice Department going forward. Remember, and I said it earlier on the radio, we had three horrifying cases that we all remember too well. The Luima case, the Bell case, and the Diallo case. In every one of them, there was prosecution either by the Justice Department or the district attorney. What's happened these last five years is unfathomable. There was no decision even from the Justice Department. That's a central question to me, Marsha. That can't happen again in the future. There has to be a decision on a meaningful timeline. What do you want Congress to do when they look at the Justice Department? They have to, I think they have to beg this very important question. Justice Department has to ensure speedy justice. It's right there in the Constitution. There can't be a process that goes on five years ever again. Yeah. I'm not going to go into private conversations today. As I said, it's a legal matter. Um, Mayor, you said that today there's has finally been a step towards justice and accountability. Does that mean that you believe that the ruling was made today was just? Again, I believe the process was fair and impartial. And it's the first time we've seen a decision. I want to remind everyone, over five years, district attorney did not bring an indictment, therefore there was no trial. Justice Department did not bring an indictment, therefore there was no trial. For the first time, there was a trial, a fair and impartial trial, and a result. Remember that point about justice delayed is justice denied, that least there was a trial and a result, and I have faith that it was a fair and impartial process. You said on the radio this morning that, you know, policies have been put in place and never wait on the Justice Department again. Do you regret waiting on the Justice Department and not going ahead with the departmental trial in 2015? Absolutely. I cannot understand how this happened. Everything I had seen my entire life uh, suggested the Justice Department believed it was its responsibility to act when other levels of government had not or at least to make a decision quickly for the benefit of justice. It's literally beyond any compare. I cannot find any parallel to what happened here, and it's an unacceptable reality. I did not think it possible, honestly. I didn't think it was possible under either administration federally. But now that we've experienced it, we will never allow that to happen again. Gloria. Mayor, uh, please, we understand that the police commissioner is going to make a final call here, but have you spoken to him about the judge's recommendation? And why aren't you saying what, you pers what your personal opinion is, now that we have this recommendation from the judge, what you personally believe should happen to this officer? I have not spoken to him. And that is because I respect this process. And I want everyone to understand this. If you believe that there's a fair and impartial process, and I do, then letting it reach its conclusion beyond reproach, beyond question, is necessary. And I am talking as the steward of this city. We need closure in this city. The Gardner family deserves it first and foremost. But we as a city need to end this chapter and move forward. I believe my role is to respect this process and respect the state law. And that's the best way to get to that closure. Jeff. Okay, so we just were listening to Mayor Bill de Blasio uh, in the wake of this verdict by a judge that Officer Pantaleo uh, should be terminated from the department. Right now he is suspended. Um, and he took some questions there, Elliot Williams. What stood out to me is, on one hand, he seemed to be putting the onus on the Justice Department, saying DOJ failed to act. It took five years uh, for DOJ to finally say it's not going to recommend charges. But at the same time, I think I heard him also admit that he has regret for not acting sooner. So basically admitted um, that DOJ didn't preclude him from acting. Yeah, both things can be true. DOJ took a long time, but that's on a totally separate track than the mayor's ability to terminate an employee that, that, that every measure had indicated had behaved in a reckless manner. So he's pinning it on process and the state prosecutors and the federal prosecutors when the buck stops with you, Mayor de Blasio, and he could have ultimately made the recommendation or terminated the individual or sought the termination of the 
the individual. So again, I think he's trying to have it both ways a little bit, hiding behind process, but also failing to recognize that it's ultimately the city's decision and they could have made this a long time ago. And you can't ignore the fact that he is running for president as well. And yeah. there's, you know, Unfortunately, there is the politics side of this and needing the police union and so forth and so on. So um, just interesting to hear how Mayor de Blasio is handling it up there on stage in the wake of this verdict. Elliot Williams, thank you so much. Much appreciated.